Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, I have some very important longer term Bitcoin technical analysis to do because in today's video, I want to outline exactly what Bitcoin has done this year, the crazy year of 2020. Because if you guys don't remember, earlier on this year, Bitcoin was trading at one fourth of what it is trading at right now. As of last night, Bitcoin has reached and hit for the first time in three years $16,500. Earlier on this year, we pulled all the way back down to 4000 So in today's Today's video, I'm going to be comparing Bitcoin to its predecessor, gold, and I'm going to be showing you why Bitcoin is the future. Guys, you're going to get a lot of great value out of today's video. We're going to do some technical and fundamental analysis, and we will be talking long-term price predictions for Bitcoin, so make sure you subscribe for that. Also, be sure to follow us at CryptoJeb over on Instagram and Twitter. The giveaway for CT2A ends today on Instagram. I will be going live here in about two hours to announce the winner of that. But without much further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. It. Before we get started, I do want to mention that Bybit is the exchange that I personally do all of my trading on. It's one of the fastest growing exchanges in cryptocurrency and the one that you want to be on. Guys, if you sign up with our link in the pinned comment in the comment section down below and use the discount code WIN$500, you will be entered to win up to $500 on Bybit when you deposit Bitcoin. Go ahead and sign up down below. It does help out this channel when you do that. I would be very appreciative. But anyway, we need to go ahead and do some technical analysis on Bitcoin. So let's jump onto the chart. First thing we need to do is zoom in on the hourly chart because I want to show you what's happened over the last 24 hours. As you guys will remember to yesterday's video, we discussed this uptrending level of resistance and this uptrending level of support. Well, it turns out that Bitcoin did rally and actually briefly break this uptrending level of resistance. The last 12 hours or so, Bitcoin has been in a slight downtrend, but come on guys, we're trading at 16.2. I remember when Bitcoin hit $13,000. It's not that hard to remember because it happened three weeks ago. Just to give you guys some perspective, over the last 90 days, Bitcoin 90 days ago was at a a local high, but even still, Bitcoin is up 37 and a half percent in 90 days. That is absolutely insane. And one thing to keep in mind also, guys, is that even over the last week or so, volume has been somewhat low on Bitcoin. If we compare the volume of Bitcoin over the last month to the volume of Bitcoin over the last six months, we are seeing a massive amount of volume. But guys, it's not just the volume that is so good on Bitcoin. As you can see, we're also still sitting above all of our moving averages. And yeah, Bitcoin's RSI is overextended, setting at 75, but we we are still not as high as we could be. RSI rallied to 85 before, and in bull markets like these, RSI can easily rally to 95. So even though Bitcoin does still need some room to breathe because we've been rallying so much over the last couple of days, as we can see right here, Bitcoin is looking remarkably bullish. But that's not even really what I want to talk about in today's video, guys, because I want to zoom out and show you guys this. From the absolute bottom that Bitcoin put in on the 13th of March 2020 in response to the massive coronavirus crash, Bitcoin pulled back 51.6% in a day from there. Over the last 250 days, Bitcoin is up 320 percentage points. Now let's stop right there. 320% in 245 days is reminiscent of something called BitConnect. If you guys remember what BitConnect is, they were looking for around 1% returns on Bitcoin. This is about 1.3%. Seems like investing in Bitcoin is the way to go, not investing in known Ponzi schemes. But nevertheless, the reason I bring this up is because if you guys have not already heard this, there is a very obvious comparison between Bitcoin and gold. Both of them I would consider to be at the very least commodities, if not currencies, each of which have definitely been used as currencies throughout their histories. But the similarities between Bitcoin and gold go a whole lot deeper than that. Number one, gold is scarce. Gold cannot just be created out of thin air like fiat currencies can. Same goes for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is hard capped at 21 million Bitcoin. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin in circulation. And as we discussed in yesterday's video, it seems like over half of the Bitcoin that's ever been created is completely off the market, locked up in either lost hard drives or cold storage. The reason that gold has been a go-to currency backer for the last 6,000 years or just a straight-up currency for the last 6,000 years is because of its scarcity, which means that it's unable to be hyperinflated, which means that it maintains its saleability over time, its value and its ability to store value over time. There are only two things in it. Let me make this very clear to you guys. There are only two things large enough to be considered worldwide currencies in existence that have those properties. One is gold. It is not so value dense that it's impossible to use as currency. It's impossible to use it for small transactions, but you can use it for larger transactions. You could theoretically buy a house in gold if both parties consented. The same goes with Bitcoin. It's divisible down to a hundred millionth of a Bitcoin, so there's no problem there. But they are both 
fully saleable over time. You can't hyperinflate either one of them. You just can't do it. Gold with space mining, maybe 50 or 100 years from now, very possible. Okay, but that's not an issue for our generation. That's an issue for the future generation, and that's where Bitcoin comes in, because Bitcoin is the technological successor to gold, and this is why I say that. Notice that Bitcoin is up 321% over the last 250 days. Now, let's take a look at gold. How far back in gold's existence do we have to go to find a 320% return? Well, it turns out you have to go back about 15 years. And by the way, a good portion of that 320% return in gold is not actually a return. It's gold not being inflated and the US dollar losing its value, which gives you a perceived increase in the value of gold. But it's not actually an increase in the value of gold. Gold's no more valuable than it used to be. The thing that's being traded over US dollars has lost its value since 2005. Think about what the minimum wage was in 2005. Now think about what it is now. You see my point. Inflation has driven up the price of gold because US dollars have lost their value. So in 250 50 days, Bitcoin has had the same return that gold has had in 320 years. You might be saying to yourself, Jab, well, duh. Bitcoin is a relatively young currency. It's been around 12 years. Gold has been around since the birth of mankind in agriculture, so it makes sense that it would be not rallying as far as Bitcoin does. You're absolutely right, and that's my point. Bitcoin is a nascent currency. It's been around for 12 years, and it's making 320% rallies in 250 days, and yet we are still not patient enough to invest and hold in Bitcoin, because every time that Bitcoin pulls back, we start thinking that we're so smart that we can time the market with our investments that we can just pull out. We're just going to say, ah, we're just going to buy back in lower because we're just so much of a genius that we know when Bitcoin is going to pull back and when Bitcoin is going to rally. Well, you know what? Technical analysis is very powerful and there's nothing wrong with doing that necessarily. But in my opinion... I believe that everyone ought have a large investment portfolio and then a smaller trading portfolio. Again, this is not financial advice. This is simply my opinion. But I do believe that even the best traders of Bitcoin should have over half of their total portfolio in cryptocurrency. The way I've always explained this to people, people ask me, Jam, how much should I trade with versus how much should I invest with? In CT2A, this is one of the things we talk about trading versus investing. I always tell people, never have more than 49% of your total worth of value in cryptocurrency in your trade trading portfolio. Keep it low. The less experienced you are, maybe have it 80 or 90% in investing. Maybe have it 10 or 20% in trading and then only use a tenth of your trading portfolio on every trade. You're trading with like 1% of your value in every trade, not half of it, not all of it. You want to make sure you have two portfolios. You have an investing portfolio and you have a trading portfolio. This is the way I've done it for three years. I've never once cashed out of Bitcoin. All of the value I put into Bitcoin, I've traded with, of course. But whenever I make a profit, I turn around and I put it right back into another trade. I've never once cashed out of Bitcoin and I've been here three and a half years. I'll tell you what I do. I take any profits I make from my trading portfolio and I put it in my investing portfolio and I don't touch it. And because of that, my investing portfolio is always getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now everybody's looking at Bitcoin rallying and they're thinking, oh man, I wish I'd have gotten in. Well, guess what? I've been getting in for three and a half years because I never sold because I'm not trying to time the damn market. Stop doing that. It's really bad for you. One of our guys actually came up to me and they're like, Jeb, Bitcoin just hit $16,000. You think we ought to sell the company's Bitcoin and then buy back in lower? And I said, no. I've never once sold Bitcoin. It's a bad idea. I am holding on to it till we go to 100 grand. I'm not going to sell a penny of it if I can help it because I follow the golden rule of burn your money. If you don't remember what that means, that means if you can't afford to take your dollars into the backyard, set them on fire, and you'll be fine and you can stay, still pay your bills, you shouldn't be investing in the first place. My point here is this. Bitcoin is gold 2.0. The reason that gold has been so important for the development of currency and economics and society in the history of mankind is because it's non-inflatable. It's because you can dilute gold coins with other things, but you can't hyperinflate the gold itself. You can do what the Romans did, which led to a currency crisis and an economic collapse in their society, and you can start putting less and less silver and gold into your coins and then cause inflation of your money, but you can't inflate the gold itself. You're inflating your dollar. You're inflating your currency. You're inflating your fiat. You're not inflating the gold. The same thing is true for Bitcoin, and I want to drill it into your head because this is why Bitcoin is the future. Number one, it's decentralized. We're not even talking about that right now, but that's a big point itself. Number two, it is non-inflatable. Guys, I can't stress to you enough how important that is. The reason that gold has been a store of value since the beginning of time is because it is not hyperinflatable. Its inflation is basically capped at 2% a year, if that, because it has to be mined same thing with Bitcoin, guys. Bitcoin has to be mined. And guess what? That is why Bitcoin is the future. That is why you should have your investments somewhat, some of them, in Bitcoin.
that's my two cents. That's my two Satoshis. Tell me what you thought in the comment section down below. Guys, I hope you did enjoy today's video. I'm wearing the suit because I'm doing the live stream over on Instagram at 12, which will have already passed by the time you see this video. But go back and watch that. Follow us at CryptoJeb over on Instagram and Twitter because someone is about to win CT2A today. Guys, we're about to hit 1,000 followers on Instagram and we just passed 3,000 over on Twitter, which is absolutely awesome awesome shout out to everybody who's following us we want to grow those numbers a lot so go and follow us guys seriously please do it and also remember if you'd like this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the post notification bell and sign up for bybit down below so you can get started trading bitcoin today i highly encourage you to invest in your education but anyway guys that is going to wrap it up for today's video before i go there's one more thing i want to talk about and that's just humility I just, you know, it's kind of funny that I'm saying that while I'm wearing a suit, but I just want you guys to remember to be humble in the coming week and honestly your whole life, but just try and break your life up into weeks. Think this week, I'm going to work on this. This week, I'm going to work on this. This week, I'm going to work on this. Like this week, I've been working on my nutrition. So as you can see, I have a box of cereal over here so that I have food. <laughs> Maybe use the next week to think about humility because in trading, in investing, you're going to get hit. You're going to get hit a lot. And it's going to take humility to understand where you screwed up you can understand where you can improve. Anyway, guys, that is going to wrap it out for today's video. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh!